Salut tout le monde. So, I have been in a lot of long distance relationships. Essentially, since the time that I was 18, any relationship I've been in has at least partially been long distance. In general, I think there's a lot of advice that I wish I had had. And so that's what this video is going to be about. And hopefully this can be of help for you as well. There were a couple of people who asked me questions about long distance relationships on my Instagram. So I will be answering your questions throughout. So I've been in relationships where we're both in the same country, where I go abroad, but the person I'm dating is still in the US. And then I've also had relationships where I'm dating someone from a different country and then we're in our respective countries. The only thing that I don't have experience with is being the person this sounds horrible, but like being the person left behind. Whenever I've been in a long distance relationship, I've always been the person skedaddling. Every time difference that I've had has been six or seven hours or less. Someone did ask me how long do you go without seeing each other? I never really told myself like okay every two weeks you've got to go see this person. I think with long distance what sucks is I obviously like I don't want to be doing it. Like I want to be close to the person that I'm dating. So if I had it my way we wouldn't even be doing long distance and therefore the amount of times that we get to see each other it really just depends on circumstances that are more or less out of our control. So for example, with Pat, who I'm dating now, I left for France in October. We were able to see each other over like a little bit after Christmas. And if I had it my way, I probably would have gone back home uh, about a month ago to see him and to see other people. But because uh, my passport needs to get renewed, I had to send in my passport and I just, I can't, <laughs> I'm pretty much stuck in France right now, which is not the worst thing in the world. It's much better being stuck here than being stuck in the US. But because of that, I, I, I can't really go anywhere. And there's also the, the issue of how expensive plane tickets are now. Like we can't just see each other on a whim. So I, I don't really have like a piece of advice as far as how long is the best amount of time to go without seeing each other. If I had it my way, I wouldn't even be doing long distance. Which brings me to my first point. And this is now, you know, what I would tell prior versions of myself and you. Long distance relationships are hard. And I don't think that this is a surprise to anyone. I've only met one or two people in my life, I would say, who enjoy long distance. But I think even so, even if you enjoy long distance relationships, they are difficult in a way that is particular to long distance relationships. And I think that even though problems arise in relationships when we're living in the same place, there are certain things you don't have to worry about that you do in a long distance relationship, like the time difference, like not being able to physically reach out and hold someone's hand and, and you know there's just mm, long distance man i feel like i'm giving it a really bad rap already in this video but i mean i i don't i don't like it that being said that being said just because long distance relationships are hard doesn't mean that they are impossible i mean i like to think that i'm a shining testament to that i've definitely had several long distance relationships and i'm in one right now that were super healthy and where i feel like i growed i growed i grew <laughs> i felt like i grew exponentially in ways that i would not have been able to had i been in the same place as my person so yeah they're definitely not impossible and i mean if they were i wouldn't be dating Betos right now so yeah, something going off of that too is long distance relationships are portrayed and also are spoken about in a way that's not the most positive. I mean, case in point, I've been <laughs> I've been like complaining about long distance since the video started, but I think it's very easy to go into your first long distance relationship with all these preconceived notions of how impossible it's going to be to get through and I just I I don't know. I mean, like I said, I don't prefer long distance relationships, but after the first one that I had and after I kind of figured out how to be a better partner long distance and to know what to look for in a partner long distance, I think that after that it was like, I wasn't scared to do it anymore. I dread it. I always dread it. It's not fun. But once you're in it, it's not going to be as scary. So going along with that, just because it's going to be hard, just because you might be scared at first, doesn't mean that you should break up beforehand. Sometimes we can just get in our heads about how just how hard the long distance is going to be. But I remember before my first ever abroad long distance relationship, I was I was leaving for France for the first time and it was going to be for four whole months. How was I going to get through it with my boyfriend at the time? Ugh. And so we decided to break up. I mean, I think that I, I'm the person really that was like, we should probably break up at the end of the semester. And I just, it was such a horrible decision because we stayed together for the semester knowing that we had an expiration date. Like that's definitely not healthy. 
And then we broke up at the end of the semester. And then I had a whole summer of being sad because I was like, I could be spending so much time with my person. This summer could be so fun and it's not. And like, for what? Because of this idea that I was gonna want to be single abroad, looking back on my life, it was definitely the wrong choice for us. Like, mm. And so um, we ended up getting back together over the summer before I went abroad. And so it just, it was like this unnecessary artificial constructed heartbreak that just didn't need to happen. And like, when you think about it, you never really know what's going to happen in a relationship. There's always something scary about committing to someone else because you're the only person you can can control. Inevitably, someone else might disappoint you, they might hurt you, and just because that's a possibility doesn't stop you from dating them in the first place. So why would you take that logic and then apply it to long distance? And I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. What else did I write on here? Oh yes, somebody did ask me. I think this goes along with it. How do you prepare for the unknown? I think in asking the question, you already know that the answer is you can't because if you could prepare for the unknown, then it wouldn't really be the unknown. That being said, the things that I wrote down in order to prepare for the unknown are to address it, meaning acknowledge the fact that there are going to be factors that you can't control and that maybe you're not even expecting or thinking of that you might have to deal with in the relationship. Definitely acknowledge it with your partner or partners. Even though you're both going to be in a long distance relationship, the fact of the matter is if there is one person who is leaving and one person who is staying. And so you're both going to be facing different challenges because it's not like you're both going to be going through the same things, if that makes sense. The second thing I wrote after addressing that you will be facing the unknown is making a game plan for it. And again, this is kind of abstract because like, how do you prepare for something that you, you don't know what it is? For example, with me and Pat, when we first, you know, were separated by the Atlantic Ocean, we decided that I think each week or every two weeks, we were going to have a specific amount of time where we were going to sit and talk to each other via FaceTime. And we were going to check in with each other in a way that was structured. So we were going to ask, how is it that you've been feeling this week? Is there anything I can do better? Is there anything that's been bothering you? Da -da -da -da. And almost kind of like a, a business meeting, if you will. Oh, and the last thing I wrote about for that is make sure that you accept it. Because at the end of the day, you just, you just got to say, okay, I'm leaving. We're gonna have to deal with some stuff eventually. I don't know what that stuff is and it's, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. So the next thing that I would tell myself, oh, this was just check in with each other, which I feel like I kind of already covered, but yeah, going along with that, however, I will say, this is very important. You can only do so much to alleviate or to improve, I guess, your partner's insecurities. I say this because I've had experiences in the past where when I went abroad, this person, could not slash did not accept the fact that me having an amazing time abroad didn't also automatically correlate to me not missing this person. So for them, it was one and the same. For them, it was if Katie's not sad and wallowing and telling me every second that she misses me, then she doesn't miss me and she's not thinking about me and blah, 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 blah. And that type of thinking can really spiral and really bring you to a place where all of a sudden you're in this kind of imagined reality where you're honestly just imagining the worst case scenario and then believing it to be true, which is very problematic, obviously. When you have an insecurity, I think it's very important to take a step back and to ask yourself, is this something that I need to work on or is this something that I need my partner to fix? And I mean, honestly, a lot of the time, the answer is gonna be it's both, but it's, it's helpful just to identify that a lot of times you do have the ability to alleviate your own insecurities. And this isn't to invalidate anything that you're feeling, obviously, but I just, I know that the answer doesn't always lie in your partner and then vice versa. If your partner's low in insecurities, the answer doesn't always lie in you. Next thing, where are we? Oh yes, this is a good one. Okay. The goal of any long distance relationship should not be getting through it. And by this, I mean, if your long distance period has a specific expiration date. So my semester abroad or the seven months that I did Tepif, whatever. If there is an expiration date, you shouldn't look at your, your relationship as like, oh, we're just trying to get to enter in end date. It's almost kind of like you're putting your relationship on pause, not in the sense of breaking up, but more so putting it on the back burner at the very least and not really, you know, if an issue comes up, we're not going to address it. Or if our relationship starts to kind of deteriorate because I'm abroad, it's fine because I'm going to be home in like a month. No. The thing about long distance is that any issues that your relationship has are going to come into the limelight. It's just like there, there's no hiding when you're doing long distance. And so to me, it just doesn't make sense to kind of sweep everything under the rug and just wait for 
you to be back like in the in the same place again because you're still the issues are still gonna be there it's just that you're not gonna deal with them <sighs> let's see what else did i put on here so i wrote down the three main pillars of long distance and this is something that i have just noticed with all of the relationships i've been in if one of these falters it's not like the whole relationship crumbles but i mean kind so the first is, of course, as I was saying, communication. This is kind of obvious. If you're not communicating with each other, it's just, I mean, like I said, communication is kind of all you have. And I do just want to talk about relationships where if you're both coming from different languages, like if your native languages are different, anybody who's learned a second language or more knows that you can't always translate word for word a sentence in any given language. And there's also going to be cultural nuances that inform what it is that you're saying. And so I think that it's just like, if you really, really want Want to know the person that you're dating in a way you've got to get their language down because if you don't you're gonna be missing little parts of their personality so yeah communication is the first thing second thing which I feel like again very obvious is trust and what's super interesting is I think a lot of times people will ask like well how how do you trust someone like how do you do it and yeah I just I don't have an answer for that like you just do it until you don't pretty much if you don't lay the foundations and trust this person before you leave it's almost guaranteed that either you're gonna have a really really crappy time or the relationship is gonna crumble or most likely both so yeah and the third thing which i feel like people don't really talk about enough is intimacy and i think the reason why especially in the context of long distance relationships is because people are kind of at a loss sometimes of like how do i maintain intimacy when we're abroad like or not abroad sorry apart i mean i did get a question on like how do you keep the spark alive how do you keep doing surprises and stuff like that and i mean i can really only talk from experience but i will say earlier i said you know like communication is really the only thing that you have when you're doing long distance so i would say use that to your advantage you know have a spicy conversation send a spicy photo obviously if you're comfortable doing that but the thing is and this is why i think that these three pillars go together communication trust and intimacy because if you already have laid the foundations of really healthy communication and then also having trust and knowing that you're safe with this person intimacy just becomes so much easier when you're apart because you know that the the person on the other you know end of the screen or whatever you know they're not gonna laugh at you they're not gonna like share what you said or what you sent to someone else I don't want to give specific examples because then I feel like I would just be putting mine and Pat's private life on blast. I don't really want to do that. So anyway, yeah, I would just say um, don't be afraid to talk to each other about how you can spice things up and it could be a fun creative exercise. And I will say just in terms of surprises, which of course don't always have to be spicy, I love a good surprise. I mean, it's kind of hard logistically speaking because sometimes you can't always surprise someone with doing like a drop-in visit but if you're in contact with your partner's family or friends or anybody who's like in the surrounding area where they are i think it's so fun to surprise them like for a visit or giving them a gift on special holidays definitely work with the people who are surrounding your person other surprises i don't know you'll have to you'll have to let me know in the comments if you have any other like surprises or ideas for people i think something else that's nice i don't necessarily know if this is a surprise per se before you leave i think that it can be really sweet to kind of have like a parting gift and something that makes sense for both of you i don't know if you've noticed i like wear this ring all the time okay let me show it to you I don't know if you can see it, but oh, it's still blurry, I think. Well, anyway, in this ring, there's pretty much just a bunch of dried up wildflowers. And these are wildflowers that I saved up from one of the very first dates that Pat and I went on. And so before I left for France, my plan was to buy some rings and to put the dried flowers in them and to make matching pinky rings for each other because like, you know, pinky promise, whatever. And I just never got around to doing it. I mean, you know by now that deadlines are just like not my thing and so i did not i had the wildflowers i had nothing else and so i left for france and he angel that he is he's the person who put these together and essentially constructed the rings using the wildflowers that i saved and so i think that um in general just having like a little you know something sentimental like that but yeah i'm sure that there are a ton of other things to do but if you have any suggestions obviously put them in the comments because i'm always trying to spice things up what else do i've got here Oh yes, okay. Despite what other people think and say, they are not entitled to information on your relationship or on giving you their opinions um, because people are gonna have their opinions, which is honestly, I think more, not, maybe not more so, but as much as I hate long distance relationships, period, I think I hate just as much other people's commentary on 
relationships. Every time that I've gone abroad, which has been quite a lot, a lot of times I'll be dating someone and when I tell other people in my life, like, oh, I got this amazing opportunity, I'm gonna go here to do this and da da da, it's almost just like this gut reaction or this like reflex of, oh, that's amazing. How does, insert partner's name, feel about it? It's, it's either that question or are you gonna stay with insert partner's name? And I just feel like it's such a personal private question. What if I was heartbroken because we decided we weren't gonna stay together? You don't know what's going through someone's mind and you're just, you're not entitled to that information. And I feel like it's very normalized in this day and age for people to ask that question. But I think that's also because of, like I was saying before, the way that long distance relationships are portrayed in TV shows and stuff, it's, it's like somebody almost always cheats or like it just falls apart or it just you break up for whatever reason and don't get me wrong like that that does happen in long distance relationships it's happened in my <laughs> long distance relationships but i just think it's so not cool and not warranted for people to ask such personal questions about something that just does not concern them for me it's on the same plane as people asking if you're gonna have kids or if you want to have kids because it's like that's literally just not your business. I've had people ask questions that I think are even worse than, oh, so are you and Pat gonna stay together? Oh, well, like, don't you feel like you're gonna be missing out on the dating scene in France? I feel like that's just such an inappropriate question. First of all, I feel like it's disrespectful to Pat, which really upsets me because it's like insinuating that the dating life I could have in France is better than my relationship with Pat, which like, I just think is ridiculous. I feel like it also kind of assumes that if I wasn't with Pat, I would be dating, which I think is also kind of a weird assumption. I don't know, it just, it, it really ruffles my feathers. Pretty much to get back to what I would tell my prior version is people are gonna ask and you don't owe them any information. So yeah. Oh, number seven, this is an important one. Do not feel bad for going abroad. I had a partner who literally made me feel so bad for being, not only for having the opportunity to live abroad long-term, but for being excited to do that. Suffice it to say that relationship did not did not last but it's just it's it's a red flag honestly if you're the one going abroad it's okay for your partner to be bummed about the fact that you're not going to be together for them to be scared of doing long distance blah 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 but it's not okay for them to take away your joy moving abroad is already scary enough but it's also such a special thing to do that anyone who's not in your corner cheering you on and making you feel good about this decision has to go quite honestly and that brings me to my very last point. So if you're abroad, if you're just long distance in general, and if your partner cheats on you, number one, it is not your fault and do not let them try to tell you otherwise because there's this little thing called breaking up with someone before you get with someone else. And it's really simple. Like it's so simple. If someone says that the reason why they did it is because you drove them to that point, that's a no for me. That's a no. Mm -mm. And the very, very last thing I wanted to say with this is, in addition to it's not your fault if they cheat on you, if they cheat on you, dump them. Dump them. Do not take them back. Do not take them back. Don't do it. So um, that's everything that I would tell my former self. <laughs> Feel free to put anything in the comments if you want to add something to this conversation. And I will see you next time. À la prochaine.